Hey everyone, it's Don LaFogre, and I have a few, or I mean a lot, of thoughts about episode 10, Panic in the Sewers. This episode was amazing! It was a little more serious than previous episodes, but I'm actually glad for that. I'm all for lightheartedness, but the character analyst in me enjoys moments when everyone gets a little shaken because we see a new side to the characters. Also, the plot was action-packed and fun. What I loved most was that each character in the gang played a part in driving the episode forward. Bear with me because I will delve into each of those actions thoroughly. I'll start off with Splinter, whose fears started the chain of events we call Episode 10. I wasn't the only one creeped out by his nightmare. Shout out to Santia 1. And I also wasn't the only one surprised that the dream was Splinter's and not, say, Leo's. Shout out to Airspeed Prime. Normally, Splinter is very wary of his rival, but not to the point where he gives the Shredder like supernatural abilities. However, we have to keep in mind that Shredder, I mean Splinter, was experiencing everything through his son's eyes. The Turtles, especially Leo, are terrified of the Shredder, so the Shredder's power was enhanced when that panic combined with Splinter's wariness. Unfortunately, that whole mess did a number on Splinter's psyche, because it likely reminded him of the destruction of his first family. To prevent the reoccurrence of his fear and pain, and of course to save his sons from the fate he dreamed of, he transformed from father to military commander, similar to the super serious and dark Leonardo of the 2K3 show. Out of all the characters, I figured Splinter would be most likely to keep a cool head, but I'm not disappointed that he lost himself in his panic. Like pretty much every reviewer out there, I can confidently say that he cares about the Turtles as his family instead of his personal army. It was nice to see Splinter getting overprotective, like he was in the very first episode when he kept giving the Turtles tips. It can't be easy for him to let his sons out every day, considering that the turtles' first few ventures to the surface landed them on Saki's radar and in a war against aliens. I mean, that just doesn't happen to regular people. I think that stress just finally caught up with um, Splinter, but he can let himself relax a little, knowing his sons are capable of staying focused and getting themselves out of tricky situations. Leo himself played a very important part in this episode as well. As I said in my last review, he learned he was rushing things. It's not like he could deny that the Shredder almost killed him. That experience clearly impacted him. For one thing, he took Splinter's words to heart. Not only was he the quickest to accept Splinter's new routine, but he also trained his brothers when Splinter didn't. If that's not a sign of worry, I don't know what is. To be honest, I was expecting Leo to be more withdrawn and even a little shadowed, but I think, you know, helping his family and training also helped him keep his mind relatively clear. In other words, training is Leo's way of dealing with stress. Setting a calm example for his brothers probably helped too. His level head definitely kept Donnie and Mikey from panicking too much in their initial confrontation with Dog Pound. As space heroes foreshadowed, however, the fear overwhelmed Leo at some point, but all it took was a quick reminder that his team needed him for Leo to clear his head. Just goes to show that Leo needs his brothers just as much as they need him. Just to go on a quick tangent, I want to point to your attention to Ronnie383's idea about how Space Heroes helps Leo in the same way TMNT can help us out and teach us a few things. It's a pretty insightful thought. I don't want to give it all away, so I'll leave the link to his episode 10 review in the description box below so you guys can check it out for yourselves if you haven't already. 
and also just generally this guy makes some pretty nice reviews so if you haven't started watching his videos I actually recommend that you do. Moving on to Wrath who is the next important character on my list. He definitely felt vulnerable and scared in this episode though as the resident tough guy he won't admit it. Oddly enough his behavior barely changed despite the stress he was undoubtedly feeling. The only difference I could distinguish was that his temper was a little worse than usual, but that's not a big deal considering we're talking about Raph. I guess Raph is just better at keeping a cool head than I expected. I'd say he's used to being strong on a regular basis, so staying tough when the going gets tough isn't a tall order. I was gratified to see Raph step up and help Leo calm down when Leo had his mini panic attack. I know someone mentioned this, but Raph could have used that moment as an opportunity to show his brothers that he is better suited to be a leader. Not saying that he is, just that it was an opportunity for him. Raph may never admit it, not even to himself. But he does realize that Leo is a competent leader and that, for now anyway, Leo deserves the position. It's also an extension of Raph's considerate side. I mean, for a moment I was like, he has one? But when you think about it, he did snap Leo back to reality using a method he knew would hit home, even though he thought it was stupid. Yay Raph for being a softie at least for a moment. The next influential member of the gang, where episode 10 is concerned, is April for rising to the occasion when the turtles needed her. Pretty much everyone is commenting and approving of her proactivity, and I'm no exception. No doubt she was aware that the turtles had placed themselves in exile, so she wanted to do what she could to find out what the Shredder was planning. It may be obvious to us, but I think it was actually pretty clever of her to think of using the purple dragons to spy on the Shredder. Also, she didn't mind using her time and equipment outside of the original defeat the Krang and save dad plan just so she could help them out. In my opinion, that's pretty nice. Even though she's only been training for a few weeks, which isn't much compared to 15 years, she made significant progress. She's obviously not perfect, but her skills are coming along. Again, I would have liked to see some on-screen training, as would Romney 383 and I think pretty much everybody, but I guess I'll have to wait for it to become relevant. Anyway, April has definitely proven to be very valuable, but she's going to need a little more discretion and she has to make better judgment calls before she can spy on anyone without getting caught. I should also add another one of Rodney 383's points about April preventing the turtles from giving up. True, without them, she'll be alone in her fight against the Krang, but I'm sure most of us know that's not the only reason, or even the major reason, why she stopped them. At this point, they are all good friends, and she's not letting them go without a fight. Lastly, out of the turtles, I will talk about Donnie and Mikey. Even though neither of them had huge roles to play in terms of character development, they still brought up important points, especially Mikey. Go figure. Anyway, Mikey was the only turtle, turtle who admitted to being scared. And that was something they were all feeling. I mean, it takes guts to admit to being afraid, even if you are the baby of the family. But he helped break the ice among the brothers. I mean, once he admitted to feeling fear, Leo immediately reassured him that his feelings were okay and normal. And I definitely think his words were directed at the entire crew. Later, Donnie and Mikey shared a relieved sentiment that fear wasn't considered a weakness among them, just going to show that being afraid is something these ninjas are coming to terms with. I just want to mention that there was an overlying lesson for our heroes. You have to face the challenges ahead regardless of whether you are ready or not.
The Turtles as a quartet, let's say, weren't ready to face Dog Pound, but Leo and Mikey, on their own, managed to defeat him in order to save their home and their father. April wasn't necessarily ready to spy on a master ninja, and yes, I mean the Shredder, but she went ahead anyway because no one else could do it. The dog ca I mean patrol buggies weren't ready for their first mission, but they still worked great. This is the lesson carried over from episode 9, where Splinter told Leo that it didn't matter that there were things the turtles weren't ready for, because their war against the Shredder had begun, and they would be forced to mature as fighters during the course of said war. Kudos to the writers for making the transition from episodes 9 to 10 seamless. This by no means is the end of consistency troubles for this show, but I felt it was important to bring up this smooth flow. Finally, moving on to the villains. There is a general consensus that dog about Dog Pound, sorry, and that is he is one dog you don't want to mess with. If it wasn't already hard enough to defeat Bradford, Dog Pound seems to be something else entirely. Both Mark Rodriguez and Rodney 383 noticed and approved of the fact that Dog Pound didn't become dumber as a result of being mutated. He's still quite despicable, and he retained at least some of his proper and I'm better than you nature. However, Rodriguez mentioned that Bradford seemed to have lost his ninja skills now that he's a big dog. To that, I say, very true. But both Bradford and Zever will have to change their fighting styles now that they've mutated. I'll miss their fighting techniques because they were very original, especially Zever's style, but I think that's something we're just going to have to accept. This has to be the first time that the Shredder planned to sneakily destroy the Turtles instead of confronting them head on. Airspeed Prime pointed this out as well. I wouldn't exactly advise taking out the entire plumbing system of a city housing more than 8 million people, but when you're as badass as the Shredder, you don't care about technicalities like that, especially when you can fly out of the, out of the area immediately in your jet. In other words, the Shredder is just way too epic to care about a city when he has an agenda to take care of. Those are all my thoughts about this episode. I had lots to say, so thanks for bearing with me. Since this episode is all about facing your fears, even if you aren't ready, the question of the week is, what are you not ready for? The answer definitely doesn't have to be anything deep. For example, for me, it's my three finals that I've got next week. So, <laughs> respond to this question, or, and slash or anyway, to my thoughts and let me know what you guys think. You guys give me some really great feedback and I also thank you for all your support. It definitely keeps me encouraged to making these reviews. So if you guys like what I think or if you think I could improve, comment down below. Alright, thanks guys again and I'll talk to you for episode 11.